Well, this week is National Children's Mental Health Acceptance Week, and there is a strong correlation between gambling and mental health struggles. Change the Game is a statewide initiative that raises awareness of youth gambling and these mental health challenges, including suicide. So here to talk with us about the change, the game, and how gaming and gambling can negatively affect our kids is Dr. Chris Toole of the Linder Fen uh, Center for Hope. First of all, we appreciate you coming in, and you and I just had a conversation because <laughs> yeah. I have four boys at home, three of which like playing the video games, and you said that is actually um, kind of goes into everything that we're talking about as far as gambling and as far as our children's mental health. Yeah, well, you know, we know from the National Council on Problem Gambling and also the uh, the uh, Federal Trade Commission, that mm -hmm. they see this correlation between gambling in, in, the, um, in the aspect of these loot boxes that are in games. So loot boxes are ways to enhance your gaming to get maybe special weapons or skins or things that make it more exciting, but you have to pay real cash for that. And sometimes you don't get those things. Yeah. So gambling, right, is this behavior that I'm spending money on something that, that there's an uncertain outcome. Mm -hmm. So it is gambling. And we also know from the various manufacturers that only 25% of their of their revenue comes from the sale of the video games. The rest comes from loot boxes. Mm -hmm. We see this correlation with depression, anxiety, substance use. So this is a real problem. And it may not seem like anything when your kids are coming up to you asking for, I need more V-Bucks to buy a skin. I need V-Bucks because it gets me access to this area or whatever the case may be. And us as parents, we're like, oh, okay, it's just a game. But like you said, this can slowly turn into something later down the road, especially because they're starting at such a young age, they're exposed to all of these things. That's right. You know, we know from the research that uh, children under 12 who are exposed to problem gambling in some form are four times more likely to develop some problem gambling disorder later on in their life. And I was just telling you too, my son, obviously he's, he's 12, so he's too young to gamble, but there are apps that he is able to get on, able to access where he's betting these coins. It's not real money, but it's fake money. And he still is learning how to gamble. So when he turns 18 and he's able to actually take those skills that he's learning now and then implement them later in life, that can turn into another big problem. That's right. You know, we know about 60 to 80 percent of high school students mm -hmm. have gambled. We know about almost 40 percent of folks who have a problem gambling disorder also have uh, various suicidal thoughts. We know of all addictions, drugs, alcohol, behavioral addictions like gambling that uh, that the rate of suicide is the highest in gambling. We know that for many years, uh, Las Vegas has been one of the cities with some of the highest suicide rates per capita, about 35 per 100,000 mm -hmm. compared to about 15 per 100,000 in Cincinnati. Wow. So this is a growing problem and uh, you know, manufacturers, because they're making so much money, there's no incentive for them to scale this back. Yeah. And so our children have become victimized by this. So what do we do as parents? I know this initiative is gonna be, you know, the whole point of it is trying to help our kids and to decrease those rates, but us at home as parents, what do we need to be doing and saying to our kids? Well, you know, one one resource is at change, changethegameohio.org, which is a, um, a website that can give information to parents, educators, you know, caregivers yeah. about this issue around problem gambling and how children can be vulnerable to that. I think that's one of the first steps to be aware of that. Also be aware too of, you know, when we give our kids our credit cards, you know, kids don't have that prefrontal cortex developed. That's the part of our brain that really puts, you know, the, uh, puts that stop on thing. We don't have that rational, logical piece in place yet. So I want to need to got to have happens right now. So I think for parents to educate themselves about this, also maybe you know talk to their state legislature about this issue. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is an issue that really needs to be addressed. Yeah, some really good information. And remember, you can just uh, go to changethegameohio.org. We'll also, of course, have all of this information on our website as well, fox19.com. Doctor, thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate you taking the time. A really important topic that I think a lot of us parents can relate to probably in some sort of way and then also be able to hopefully take the steps needed to protect our kids. So. All right. Thanks, All right. Lauren. Yeah. Thank hey, you. let's send things over.